Good morning, everyone. It's Amy, and I'm here for week 15 of Build Your Stash and Craft. And this week, we are going to make a jelly plate. And this is going to give us fun for a very long time. So, but the first thing that we need to do is we need to take our bowl and both of our pans and get the labels off. And then we need to wash them very well because when things are processed, um, they wind up having a little bit of oil on them. They could have a little dirt in them. Um, and you don't want any of that to be in your jelly plate or to affect your jelly plate. And like with this one, um, this has sticky stuff on it. So there's a little sticky stuff in the pan on there. And so you want to make sure that you get all of that off because that sticky stuff, when you put your jelly plate in there, could very possibly stick to your jelly plate and actually like rip a piece of it off because jelly plates are a little bit delicate. So make sure that you get them washed really well and get them rinsed really well so that you don't have any soap in them. And um, so I'm gonna go and do that and then I will be back. Okay, I am back. And so we are going to mix this up. I've got everything washed well. And what we need to do, I'll do them both at the same time. We need to add our two bottles of glycerin. And then we are going to need to sprinkle seven packets of the Knox gelatin into the bowl. And then we're going to let it sit for one minute. I was thinking it needed to sit, and then I was thinking it needed to be stirred. So <laughs> I have one and a half cups of water heating up in the microwave because we'll need one and a half cups of boiling water after we let this sit for one minute. And glycerin is very thick. So, you know, I let it go until it kind of starts dripping and then I know that that's pretty much it. But don't throw this bottle away or this bottle away. Set them aside, and when you're all done, put a little bit of hot water in one of them, just maybe like, like halfway up to the label. Swish it around really good all over, and then pour that water into the other bottle and swish that around really well, and you will have glycerin water there, and it will be quite thick glycerin water. So, and that works for a lot of different things, so. Um, we are just going to put these in here and just sprinkle them around the top and then they kind of start to look funny they kind of start to look like they're growing a little bit and so let's see here there's two three and then while this is sitting for a a minute I'm going to give you just a couple of tips on your pans I have never done this in a plastic bowl before so we're going to find out if it works in a plastic bowl I don't know why it wouldn't so long as it's a microwave safe bowl I don't start adding my minute till I get all seven and you want to kind of sprinkle it around because you want to get kind of contact between those and give the gelatin a chance to start doing its thing. Kind of reminds me on the order of like yeast or something, how you set yeast aside for just a few minutes after you put it in the hot water. Okay, so we have got a cup and a half or two six ounce bottles of glycerin and seven packets of gelatin sitting here. Now we're gonna let this sit for one minute and I'm going to there. I put my water back on for a minute to verify that it really was boiling water when we get to it. The one thing I wanted to is I was washing these and I'm not so sure how well, I think you could see it pretty well. There is a little dip. This is our cookie sheet that we're going to dump our plate onto as, as a base. But if you were gonna use this as your jelly plate pan, this little dip right here let's flip it over on the other side you can see how it's indented and this is lower your jelly plate would be flat and then on the edge 
it would flip up like that because it's going to take the shape of this pan. So our uh, the brownie pan, the smaller pan that we have, is completely flat across the bottom. So no matter what you use, you can use if you can find a bowl with a flat bottom. Um, I used a flat cake plate to make a round one, but you just have to make sure that whatever you're looking at has no kind of grooves or anything in there. It's been a minute. Our water is boiling. And so now we are just going to add in our water. And we are going to stir this for five minutes. Now it gets looking very clumpy and kind of yucky. But you're just going to stir slowly. And the whole thing with this is, is that you may want to like be tempted to whisk it or something. Um, you don't want to do that. You want to stir it very slowly because you don't want to get a bunch of bubbles in here. And... After we have stirred this for five minutes, which I'd better look at the clock, um, then we are going to put it back in the microwave on high for 30 seconds. Then we'll stir it for 30 seconds, put it in high for 30 seconds. We'll do that three times. And by then it should be completely melted. See, it's quite, it's kind of stringy and everything just the whole purpose that we're doing here is we're melting the glycerin. And that really is the whole object of, or we're not melting the glycerin, we're melting the gelatin. And that's the whole object of your jelly plate is to get that gelatin nice and melted. And so just keep stirring it. I kind of like push the big globs against the side of the bowl a little bit to kind of flatten them out a little bit so that they have more chance to get in contact with the hot water. And also this morning it's very cold. It's quite cold outside and I haven't turned the heat up yet this morning so it's kind of cold in here which by stirring this water it's going to cool it down even quicker. And when you get to the end of your five minutes and you put this in the microwave, make sure that you kind of clean your spoon off before you do that because you want your you want all of this gelatin to be in your bowl. So you don't want a whole bunch of it stuck to your spoon. Okay, I am going to finish stirring this for five minutes. And then I'm going to pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds. And when I pull it out to stir it after that 30 seconds, um, I will bring you back. I don't know if, well, you know, you could fast forward through this part. Because I'm not so sure if some people might want to just really see the kind of complete process. Although I'm not going to keep you on here for every 30 seconds that it's in the microwave. I'll go ahead and I'll pull it out and stir it in front of you I think but yeah it's really it's really starting to break up the pieces are much smaller and that's just the whole object don't get disheartened if this happens because it, it's just the way that it starts it just takes a while for it to get itself figured out and you're your five minutes and your third, you know, I mean, you do want to microwave it on high for 30 seconds and stir it for about 30 seconds, but it's not a, a stopwatch thing. Look at your clock and basically kind of try and stick to those times. But see, this, the pieces now, when they started out great big, lumpy pieces, they're getting smaller and smaller. And we haven't even heated it up yet. So it's really starting to come together. And the glycerin in this, um, I watched the Frugal Crafter and she was talking about it because some people put in like rubbing alcohol and everything and that smells really bad. Um, and she was saying that she talked to a chemist who said the glycerin will keep this from molding. Um, 
and so that's you don't need the rubbing alcohol or anything like that in there I've had mine for a long time and it has not molded yet I've had it for I think probably at least a year and it has not it has not molded or anything so um, what she was saying I believe is right so this should last you a long time and with your own homemade jelly plates if they get dings in them and everything and they're starting to make marks on your paper that you don't like uh, you can just rip it up put it back in your bowl put it back in your microwave 30 seconds at a time I'm gonna rub this spoon off I don't have any kind of lotion or anything on my hands And that water is kind of hot, but it's not like boiling hot like when I put it in there. The cold air in here really has cooled it down. There we go. And we're going to use that spoon over again, so when we use it, it will get more off the spoon. Now, don't, um, don't set your spoon on paper or something like that. You don't want it to... So this is what it looks like right now. It's got a few floaties in it. I'm gonna pop this in the microwave for 30 seconds. And then we'll stir it for 30 seconds and you can see what it looks like. Be right back. Okay, we're back. This is gonna be a little bit shaky. Here we are after 30 seconds on high in the microwave, which to me, I just figure high is just the regular setting. I have a 30 second button and I just push that 30 second button. So, but it still has the floaties in it. And, you know, the tendency for me is, and it may just be me, I tend to like stir fast. You have to be careful about doing that because you don't want a ton of bubbles. So you wanna like stir slowly and, you know, not do any kind of like whisking because you don't want a bunch of bubbles in it. So remember that every time, stir slowly, stir slowly. And if there's a few of those pieces of gelatin kind of sitting on the side, I try and smush those a little bit. Get it over to the side and give it a bit of a, you know, kind of a rub. Our 30 seconds is up, so I'm going to put this back in. And this is very sticky also. So, where I just set my spoon, that's going to get really sticky. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, this is after our second 30 seconds. I have to look at the clock to kind of get my 30 seconds. And it's starting to clear up even more. It gets pretty clear. And if I wasn't holding the phone and looking through the lens, I would be doing a little bit more carefully squishing some of the lumps that are in there. And I'm stirring it a little bit fast. I shouldn't be. So just slow down and get those lumps out. Yeah, kind of push your lumps. Use your 30 seconds to just kind of kind of flatten out those lumps because you don't want them in there. You don't really want to take them out. That's your gelatin and your gelatin is what makes your plate solid. That's what makes it a jelly plate. So try and get those smushed around there. Okay, I think our 30 seconds is up, so I'm going to put it back in one more time. And I'll be back. Okay, I just took it out for the third time, and I have probably just spent a minute um, before I brought you back because I needed to be able to see. Squishing the little tiny... Um, lumps on the bottom, the little bits of um, gelatin that have not melted, and I just kind of squished them on the bottom and squished them on the side because you don't want those bumps in there. So, 
And if you have a little strainer when you pour it into your vessel that you're going to make your jelly plate out of, I'm going to put it back in one more time. This is not a total exact science, so I said do it three times. Um, just do it till you think you're ready, although you're not going to want to do it more than, you know, like maybe four, maybe five times. You know, you don't want to do it forever. You're not going to get every single one of those little bumpies out. So the reason that I spent time, like, really pressing them around is that if you press them to the sides and the bottom, it helps them to get flattened out and to melt easier it also they kind of stick to the sides and the bottom so you don't have that actual lump in your in your gelatin so we're looking pretty good I have a few lumps here and like I said if you had a little strainer um, I never thought of that before but if you had a little strainer you could pour it through a strainer and it would grab all of those lumps out of there I'm just going to give it a bit of a stir, just slowly. We want it mixed well, and also the stirring is what helps the gelatin that's left in there to melt. And then we're going to take it over and pour it in our pan. The one thing that I didn't tell you yet is when you, before you start all of this, get your pan cleaned and set on your counter, the one you're going to mold this in, but make sure that it's level. The first time that I made one, I had to remelt it because um, it wasn't level. I mean, and it was bad. It was like a half an inch on one side and a quarter of an inch on the other. So here's our pan, and it's all level. And see, we do have floaties in here. We're going to try it this way. I'm just going to pour it in there. And if you if you don't have a level to level your pan, the biggest thing is you just want to make sure that it all looks about level. Something I didn't think about the first time that I made one. And so, you know, after you put it in there, just kind of look how far is it on that side and how far is it on that side. Just go around and just see if it looks kind of level. If not, just fold a paper towel because it doesn't usually take much to level it up. Just fold a paper towel and stick it under the side that looks like it's too too high. Okay, now I have little floaties in here, and they're settling to the bottom. The thing is, is the bottom is going to be your jelly plate. This here with the bubbles or whatever on it, no big deal. This is going to be the bottom of your jelly plate. You're going to flip it over. The bottom of this pan is going to be your jelly plate. So I do not want those little... I do not want those little pieces of gelatin in there so I am just going to carefully just like that I'm gonna take them out because what's gonna happen is when we flip this over and take the jelly jelly plate out it is those are going to leave and they're they're a little bit hard, they're a little bit like solid. So they're gonna leave a bump on what would, what is gonna be the top of your jelly plate. So I'm just gonna go through, there's not many in here. And so I'm gonna just go through and just pick those out of there carefully so that I don't get a whole bunch of bubbles. And then I will be back. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. I took about five minutes maybe um, just using a spoon and just going in and just like if there was a little piece, I would just slowly pull it to the side, pull it up the side, and then just tap it off. And I did get some little pieces out of there. But I have a few bubbles on the top. What it, This is the top right this second, but that's going to be the bottom. So I'm not worried about those. I don't have a bunch of them. And it seems like I have most of the stuff that settled to the bottom that did not get mixed. So this is going to have to sit now for two to five hours. I'm definitely going to probably let it sit five hours. Um, I'm not going to rush it because I don't want to start over because then I just have to wait another five hours. So when this is solid, I will come back and we'll go to the next step. 
Okay everyone, it's Amy and I am back and here is our jelly plate and it's nice and solid. Um, very kind of bouncy and it has been seven hours. It's two o'clock and I finished this at seven this morning. Um, I had to do Papa's lunch and everything and so I didn't get a chance to do it after five hours. But we're going to try and take it out. I haven't done anything at all. I'm going to just take a butter knife and I'm just going to put it in on the edge. And as I put the butter knife in, I'm going to pull away from the edge with my fingers like this. And it's pulling it away. And really all we're doing here is we're letting air get underneath the bottom. And I don't know if you can see that bubble that's coming in there. We just need to release the suction from this. Um, but even though you say, well, there's a lot of, you know, air going in under there, so I'm good. You have to go all the way around because the edges are going to be stuck in different points around the edges. So, and I'm just running this right down the side and then just, just barely putting it down in there. That corner out of there. And by putting the knife on there, it's just breaking the seal right at the top. And because this is so nice and solid, it's just pulling right away as I pull back with my fingers. It's working really well. have this last corner here and there we go okay we've released it all the way around and now what we're going to do is we've got our cookie sheet and we are just going to kind of pull up on it a little bit get our hand under there take it out and voila we have our jelly plate I'm gonna just kind of put this in the center here I do want to make sure it's kind of centered because I want to be able to fit my pan, this pan, over top of it. And yep, that fits really well. Okay, now this pan we're going to use as our cover whenever we put it away. So that's just nice and solid, there's nothing. If you put it away like this with maybe a piece of parchment or plastic or something on it, and something gets set on top of it, it could put a ding or a dent in it. But this looks really smooth, it looks great. And we're going to try it in just a little bit here. Um, I am going to stop the video here. And I'm going to come back with part two of week 15. And part two is going to be making our own briar. I got this at the Dollar Tree. And I got this little one at the Dollar Tree that comes already with a little roller on it which we're not going to use that for our jelly plate because it would soak up too much paint. And then I got a full size one. So I'm going to use these, some masking tape, some paper towel, um, and a toilet paper roll, and a, actually two toilet paper rolls, and a paper towel roll. So that's what I'm going to come back and do is, is show you how to make the brayer because I think that's going to make a long enough video and then we'll come back and we will play with our jelly plate. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make your own jelly plate. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.